and welcome to Blockchain Gaming World with me, John Jordan. So, the uh, subject of this video today is wrapped kitties. In many ways, this to me encapsulates the best and the uh, the worst of blockchain. Um, <laughs> so, what is wrapped kitties? So, as it says on the screen here, wrapped kitties are an ERC twenty token. So that just means that they are a uh, Ethereum compatible crypto token, cryptocurrency, effectively. Um, each is backed one to one by an ERC. 721 crypto kitty so in erc 721 these erc things are, are ethereum standards um an erc 721 is what's called a non-fungible token so an erc 20 is called a fungible token a fungible token is something that um just means that uh it doesn't matter e every token is uh equivalent so the the example often used is if you have a dollar bill then that's for all intents and purposes, the same as every other dollar bill. So, so every fiat currency, um, the whole point of that is it's fungible. It, pe people, people don't, shopkeepers don't say, "I'm not accepting your dollar bill." It's not the proper dollar bill. If it's a, you know, unless it's been fraudulently created, all dollar bills are the same. Um, similar, all all bars of gold, assuming they are the same, um, they, they they pass the standard of being a bar of gold. They are, are the same. Um, a non fungible token is one that is unique so it cannot be passed off as the same as another one it might be the same value so you could have two non-fungible tokens that are worth a hundred dollars but they are different they are unique so, so basically what's going on here is that you're swapping um you're you're uh, transferring fungibility um, there are lots of other things going on as well but that's that's basically what this headline is saying so so what is a crypto kitty well i guess we know what a crypto kitty is it is a um a a uh, non-fungible token created using the blockchain game Criti uh, Crypto Kitties. Um, so, to create a Crypto Kitty, you need two Crypto Kitties that you will breed together. That they will then create a new Crypto Kitty that will be a um, version of their um, digital DNA. So it is a breeding process. And the point of the game Crypto Kitties is um, some of those attributes when you breed them will create. Uh, graphical different sorts of graphical kitty so some of them may be just very dull and then and not have any particularly interesting attributes but what they what that game has done over time is it has limited edition kind of breeding programs and if you create a kitty using you know, that has a certain attributes it will create it will it will have new artwork um so uh if you've played crypto kitties i've played um uh, Played it a bit over time. It tends to kind of come come and go depending on 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 um, my my mood <laughs> mainly. Um, but uh, the val valuation of crypto kitties is very um, subjective in most cases. And if you're doing, if you're certainly if you try, if you start a breeding process to try and breed one of these um, what they call fancy um, kitties, which is one of these time limited ones where it creates l limited edition artwork, you basically end up breeding a lot of ones that you don't want. Um, and the problem is, if you have crypto kitties that, want, that you don't want, um, and they're not really actually very interesting to anyone else, obviously you can you can you can kind of try and sell them for the lowest value. Um, there are people always buying crypto kitties, but there are now well over 1.5 million crypto kitties. So the market is not that big that that a crypto kitty that doesn't really have um, the attributes that that give it value in the system. Uh, a lot of them are, va are value less, really. Um, so, so wrapped kitties, I guess, is is a is an attempt to go. You probably have a lot of crypto kitties that you don't care very much for. Certainly, you know, when you have your first one, it's very exciting. When you have ten, um, then obviously some of them are not so exciting. When you get to, I'm not the stage of having a hundred, but I've probably got like thirty or forty, or or, or had bred thirty or forty. So, I mean, some of them you can sell off um, if you're lucky. Um, you basically have a lot of kitties knocking around that you don't really care about. So the idea of having this wrapped kitties is you can take some of these ones that you don't care very much about, um, and you can create this ERC20 token. So an ERC20 token um, could be, you know, lots of things on Ethereum are ERC20 tokens, um, and they can have kind of value. They can go, you know, mainly they they have value because they are a token that is useful in a blockchain project. In the case of wrapped kitties, that's not really the case. This is more like a um, you know, a blockchain oddity because we can do it, we're going to do it. 
it's kind of hard to hard i don't know how anyone would uh would would work out the value of a wrapped kitty as an erc20 token because all it is is an erc20 token you can't use it for anything else i think you can you, you can you can unwrap your um as we can see here in this website you can convert kitties to a wrapped crypto kitty token and we can convert our wrapped crypto kitty tokens back to the original kitties so we're not destroying the kitty we're effectively locking it in some sort of a kind of escrow account um uh yeah <laughs> it kind of is what it is i don't know this is why it's, it's funny um so uh let's see if this works so you can see here so my my uh wrapped kitty uh, balance is is one because i i've done this already um because i was i was testing it out we could even see here, we could go and have a look at um, CoinGecko. And we could look at, so CoinGecko is just a, one of the many websites where you can look to see uh, what the value of cryptocurrency is. Obviously the biggest cryptocurrency um, is, is Bitcoin and it's currently worth $9,913.10 apparently. Well, that's the spread, I guess, between various different exchanges. But we can see here, we put in wrapped CryptoKitties, we can see wrapped crypto, CryptoKitties is the, um, the 2,973rd most valuable <laughs> um, uh, cryptocurrency. Probably not going to get a lot of information off this because it's obviously not a very liquid um, currency. But we can see here, so so one crypto, one wrapped crypto kitty, one of these tokens is worth um, 29 cents. We can kind of maybe have a look and see how that value has changed over time. So, you know, it's not like it hasn't gone up and down a bit. So when it, this thing started out, they were potentially worth 40 cents. We had a bit of a, um, a very short spike that got them up to uh, almost 60 cents. As with most cryptocurrencies, with most ELC20 tokens, we're uh, heading down, down, down. Um, obviously, you know, the whole point of this thing, is th there's no... How would you value this this sort of thing? I mean, how how could you stop the value going down? Um, interestingly, I suppose someone could start building some interesting blockchain project that used these things, and then the value could go up. But you know, you're not you're not doing that. You're not you're not selling your Bitcoin to buy wrapped crypto keys. I hope. Um, and we can see here, one Bitcoin is worth um, thirty four thousand um, wrapped crypto kitties. And I don't think there's probably that many wrapped crypto kitties. Around, although it could be, I mean, there's 1.5 billion crypto kitties um, in existence. Okay, so we kind of get the idea. How does it work? Um, uh, okay, so enter the ID of the kitty you wish to give for wrapped. Uh, you wish to give for wrapped kitties. So I'm going to have to go and have a look at my crypto kitties. No oh, crypto therapy could be. Um, crypto kitties. Okay. So um, I've logged into MetaMask. Here is my account. Let's have a look at my kitties. Um, yes, they're mine. So I could go and find um, one of these. So I've got 27. I've actually got a few more. I've got some more in another wallet. Um, but let's find a really rubbish one. So this is one of the early ones I had. Not obviously, but you can name your crypto kitties. So I named this one in the early days, somewhat surprised because it was hilarious. Um, but what I need here is the um, is the number. So the name is not actually saved to the blockchain. The name is just um, something you can change if you want to. It's not saved to the blockchain. So I've got my number. I can go back to wrapped. Crypto kitty is I can enter the number, um, and so I then click on this. Obviously, it's signing through uh, MetaMask. Obviously, it will work through other wallets. Obviously, the Dapper wallet I assume it would work uh, for as well, but probably other ones as well. So, gas fee is Ethereum. It's going to cost me thirty-one um, cents. So that's that's um, more than the value <laughs> of the wrapped kitty, which is why this thing's like an oddity. Um, so. You wouldn't normally do this, and I don't know why you do it anyway. I'm going to do it because it's a video. Um, I haven't got much either, have I? Um, so we're going to have to wait now for this to be written to the Ethereum blockchain, which is always fun.
Okay, so I just open MetaMask just to see what's going on, so we can see now this this uh, transaction has been approved. Um, so we can go back and have a look. So we see it's been approved. Wait until the transaction above has confirmed, then send the final transaction here. So don't quite know why that's the way it is, but obviously we've basically sent this CryptoKitty to a smart contract, the Wrapped Kitty smart contract, and now we have to um, do something else. Uh, and then of course hilariously because I have so little ether in this um, account it's going to cost me <laughs> so the whole thing would have cost me like one dollar something oh that's a bit tedious isn't it let's uh, why um, obviously with Ethereum the price of gas can go a bit crazy um, Actually, we might as well just leave it there. <laughs> I mean, this is this is as I said at the start of the video. This is the um, this is the the um, you know the the uh, interesting, fun, messing around kind of bit of the blockchain, which all this kind of crazy stuff can happen. But actually, you know, does it matter? What is it? Is it economically important? You know, what kind of what is the in terms of kind of hard metrics? What's the point of doing it? Well, that that kind of is locked into the eye of the beholder. So um, on a more serious note though, um, what I do think is what is interesting with something like RapKit is, and I, I know nothing about the um, kind of people who created it or, or, or the, the reasons they did that. What is quite interesting, I think, in the blockchain space is, is you have this, what is often used as a positive kind of thing about blockchain games and, they, you know, you make a game on a blockchain, it can't be switched off, it, it can't, the servers can't go down, you know, unless the Ethereum blockchain goes down or whatever kind of blockchain um, the game is on goes down you know this thing's up forever well just because something's available forever doesn't mean people are playing it forever um, and often you find or certainly I found over the last year or so you a new game comes out you maybe get a bit excited and you, you buy some some items in, in, in a pre-sale or, or you just go and kind of buy some characters or some some uh, weapons or whatever the, the thing is that is whatever the item is that is locked to the blockchain you go off and buy it and then maybe you play the game for a bit, or maybe you don't play the game for a bit, or maybe, you know, very quickly the, the number of users playing the game drops to such a level that the game is kind of becomes a zombie game. It's no really, I mean, it's, it's not, it's not been switched off. But it's not being updated, and no one's playing it. So there's no, there's no real functionality there because obviously a lot of these games are designed to have a certain a number of players playing them for them to be meaningful. Um, and so how, you know, maybe we just put that that kind of decision making down to. Um, kind of a you know happenstance that that's kind of how these blockchain games are it's very uh, very kind of early in the situation you kind of you know you shouldn't be expecting a good experience and if you spent kind of fifty dollars buying something and and the game's dead now well that's kind of tough on you sort of thing but but equally a more positive way of looking at it is well should these games actually be designed with some sort of kind of obsolescence built into it that that actually instead of having this item that i don't care less about and the game's dead um and I don't necessarily want to wait around for some someone to kind of create a game where that item might be useful. Um, maybe I can I can sell that item off, not to an individual because who's going to buy? Who's going to take my fifty dollars sword off me for a game that's not working anymore? But if I could even get like five dollars back off that by by sending it to some sort of um, uh, some sort of kind of contract address that would give me something back, then that's kind of interesting, and that and that's actually when you start thinking about blockchain games as an ecosystem or as a platform, having someone who who is the kind of holder of last resort, as we would think about it in a financial sense, so like a like a central bank, um, and and there are some examples of people doing that. So the the engine platform is interesting. That every item minted that supports the engine platform uses these engine coins which are again an ERC20 token um, and that means at any point you can destroy those tokens by sending them to a the engine smart contract and you can get the engine coin out that was used to mint them in the first place so if you created a sword and it you and it was 10 engine coins were used to mint that sword um, that may be, um, and, you know, the engine coin, the, the price of an engine coin will go up and down depending on on on, on other factors. But um, and you may have bought it for fifty dollars. Um, an engine coin, ten of those engine coins might be worth only five dollars. Maybe they're worth ten dollars. Maybe they're you know, maybe they're worth sixty dollars. And everyone's like, 
destroying all their all their in-game items because <laughs> they're making money. I don't know. I mean, all these things come with kind of caveats and, and, and interesting um, kind of uh, emergent behaviour. But anything that provides for me, anything that provides a backstop, anything that provides a, a lender of last resort, and this is kind of what what, what the Rap Kitties thing does. He doesn't do it, I don't think, economically, um, or certainly not at the moment, because you're, uh, you know, you're spending gas fee, and, and they get, you know, you wouldn't do what I've done. Um, you would wait till the gas fee is low, or you, you know, the better UX would be. Um, would actually automatically go. This is the price of a Rap Kitty ERC twenty token. This is the price of the gas fee. Um, we'll kind of stack this up and do this, um, in, you know, when, when it makes sense. And, it, and in fact, you can see here, you can bundle more kitties into this transaction. So the gas fee I'm paying um, isn't going to change if I was going to do one crypto kitty, one crypto kitty or a hundred. So, so that would be if you were kind of sensible doing it. But the wider philosophical sense that I'm trying to get to, rambling around, is is this is a this is a um, you know, someone providing a, a a holder of loss, you know, a holder of last resort for for crypto kitties because there's 1.5 million crypto kitties out there. That's many more than would ever be bought or sold in terms of being being a marketable um, item. Um, so even though the blockchain means that these things can never be switched off, it's actually quite interesting having a process, or at least even for a game developer, thinking about a process that means people can destroy their items in the game and get some sort of financial um not reward really well it's a reward for destroying but but they can get some sort of kind of um um kind of they can recover some amount of 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 their um value and that becomes then very interesting that you probably would find you'd actually have these companies that would end up buying stuff as happens with things like insurance policies or endowment policies there are companies who spend all their time you know buying that kind of stuff out and, and and the user is not getting the full value out of it, but they're getting more than they would do if they, if they, you know, would let these kind of um, financial instruments lap, kind of uh, lapse, um, and 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 not fulfil the um, value. I mean, those are different sort of things that you have to pay in over time. Um, but that's when that's kind of kind of when insurance products become interesting when you have these these third parties who can come in and and and. To some degree, I mean, it's truism. It's not a nice term, but it kind of becomes a win-win sort of thing that the the people who hold this item can extract some sort of value, and the most value goes to the people who can aggregate this over over a large amount of wallets. In this case, um, but I find that kind of stuff very interesting. So, so there we go. Wrap kit is the um, yeah the the, the uh, things that are very interesting that don't kind of work necessarily for the individual at any one point. Maybe because of UX, maybe because of the way the Ethereum blockchain works. But um, that's blockchain gaming world. I mean, this is this is this is where we are with blockchain at the moment. Intellectually fascinating, not always um, the most sensible use of our money. Um, but there we go. Uh, if you're interested, um, please do subscribe to this channel. All we do is talk about blockchain games and play them and blockchain kind of game products. Um, any comments? Put them in the comments box. Maybe maybe you are a big fan of rap kitties. Um, <laughs> let me know where I'm going wrong. Um, but thanks for watching and hope to see you again soon. Thank you.